managing partner of uh, BSUR in China, based in Shanghai, and you have been working in in um, in this company in branding as a partner for um, six years, if if, I, if I'm correct from your LinkedIn profile. Um, branding is such a topic in China. I feel that uh, I discovered branding in China. I didn't, I didn't, I was not aware of branding was important when I was living in France, when I was studying. And actually when thinking about it, when preparing for the interview, I was thinking, yes, the business of Nike, the business of Coca-Cola, they don't produce themselves. They work with OEM. So basically the main asset is branding, it's brand. And that's something which is a bit contrarian because you think that uh, when you manage a company, your own identity, your brand, you are going to manage yourself. But no, even this part, they externalize it, part of it. They are branding agencies taking care of their commercials, of their, of their visuals, of their videos, and so on. You have worked for companies, international companies, uh, Mercy, Knoppers, um, Mini, Thermo Fisher, and also um, something very interesting I would like to dig in, Chinese companies. You have worked right. for Shuanglin, you have worked for um, uh, all, all the other companies you will mention because I, I don't know which one you would like to talk about. Or at least even some of them are uh, foreign companies. You have worked for their branding strategy in China. So that's something I like to, I like to dig in. Another aspect I feel very interesting in what you built in, in China is that you, you, you approached your career as an entrepreneur in a slightly different way as we usually uh, think of. Most people think as entrepreneurs as someone starting from scratch, zero to one, like Peter Thiel is saying in his book. You, you have nothing, you built out of nothing something. You had a different approach. You approached a company already existing, BSUR, uh, with already existing clients, and uh, you told them, um, I can open your office in Shanghai, in China. And I feel that I'm seeing more and more Chinese, or at least I see a lot of Chinese who have done that. I don't know if it's more and more, but I, I, I know a lot of them uh, who have contacted either an agency, either a brand, either a pro product company to start their operation in China. So I'd like to know more about it. Thank you, Chin, for being with us. Okay, thank you and good morning. Um, yeah, thanks for the introduction and then uh, many questions. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, we can go uh, 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 into quite a lot of details by, by what you've started. Um, maybe first start with what is branding, right? And, and, and also, is there any difference between the branding in, in China and in the West, uh, uh, Western countries that we are uh, familiar with? Um, so branding, I, I guess many people are confused by the word brand. Uh, they think it refers to a logo uh, or, or website, and then, um, and then, uh, but it's actually there's so much more uh, about, so much more than that. Um, your brand, it, your brand is what comes to the mind when your customers think of your business, um, and then this is um, what makes you unique and different. And it gives you a competitive edge and then allows you to make uh, emotional connection with your customer. Um, well, without one, uh, you will be viewed as a commodity and functional um, uh, objective. And your differentiator will be just be pricing. Um, and then which uh, in the case, uh, it will put you in the race for the bottom uh, in the end. So, so that is, uh, um, uh, how to say, in a, in a very, uh, uh, in a nutshell of what is a branding uh, or a brand about. And, and the difference between branding in China and then in the West, uh, I, would, I would really say um, in the West, um, the market development, uh, the market is uh, it's more mature in terms of the uh, consumerism and then uh, uh, the product development through year uh, through years of time that has been much longer. Uh, I would say China start to really um, develop the marketing knowledge and then brand knowledge in the past you know, eight five eight years or less than ten. 
Um, and then before that, it was more of, okay, what is missing in the product? And then if anyone can make a product in this market, they can sell. They, are, they're, they don't have so many of competitors in the same category. Uh, as long as they are able to manufacture and then uh, to, pro to, to be distributed for the market, then they are able to sell because they're providing something that uh, people have not really had before. And then uh, they are able to provide a lot of uh, different uh, um, functional benefits to people. And then that's what people are buying. Um, sure. So as long as that message is clear, uh, what you're offering as a as a functional benefits, and then people people realize, oh, they have the demand, or they already had a demand that they're searching for that particular things. But what is happening now is uh, now it's a bit different. That the uh, um, same category, uh, similar products, uh, use a lot uh, in the in the same category, and then that means uh, there's a great and fierce competition in each of the segments. Uh, and then that's why that's where we would need a branding uh, to to make each um, well uh, to let the individual brands or product to stand out, and then you will have a competitive edge, and then you are able to uh, differentiate from your competitors, and then consumers can recognize you better, um, and therefore they they are interested by your interest in your product and decide to buy your product. So. So compared to, uh, I would say, uh, probably in the recent 10, um, you know, eight years that China, uh, Chinese companies really start to look at the branding and then uh, to, to, uh, to develop a certain level of sophistication in this. Uh, and then uh, I think China has been changing, uh, um, uh, developing so fast and then growing so fast. And then the marketing technology becomes its own unique uh, way of, um, how to say, uh, practicing in, in, in the reality. And um, that's probably in um, what, we, what we've seen our clients, uh, they have been doing it's very different from uh, uh, the marketing books that it's already been, you know, uh, what's been described in the uh, marketing books that has been written or provided by many of the successful Western uh, marketers. So, so now uh, a it feels like China is creating its own branding and marketing book at the moment. I see. So yeah. um, currently, uh, how many clients have you worked well for? Um, um, what's the size of the team in China? Uh, could you tell us a bit of, of an idea of, uh, of, of your company content? Yeah, sure. Uh, so in China, we are a creative brand consulting. Uh, company and we are providing services to um, uh, uh, to help companies to develop brand strategy and creative uh, communication concept. Uh, help them to um, uh, 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 generate a greater a greater brand awareness. Um, and then in in China, we help both uh, international companies uh, entering the Chinese markets and also help companies in China to expand and. Uh, and it expands their, their market here and, and uh, also to help their company to grow uh, in the Chinese market. Um, in, at the moment, we have about uh, eight uh, people, core members, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. being uh, mainly a strategy consultant and a an, uh, creative consultant. Uh, in in this two, uh, we have these two core team that uh, help to serve uh, in the needs of um, uh, uh, brand strategy, and then uh, next will be the creative concept. Of how to how do we in implement? How do we help the business to co communicate in a more distinguished and a more unique, uh, unique, uh, unique ways? So, so that's the that's the basic that's the basic structure of um, how we set up here, um, and we have. Uh, as I said, we have about eight people, a uh, core team member that's been four of the strategy uh, consultant side and then four of the creative side. Uh, for the creative that uh, we have a mix of uh, uh, the graphic, uh, creative and the art director and the copywriter. Uh, and each of the team uh, seems, uh, uh, well, each of the team members are uh, cross-disciplinary uh, in terms of their skill and experience. This is very important for uh, uh, for helping uh, when helping uh, our clients 
because the branding it's a, it requires a very integrated uh, skills uh, of your understanding throughout different businesses. Uh, and on the personal level, that also requires um, a mix of uh, life experience and then um, high level of curiosity and uh, uh, great learning uh, skills uh, in order to understand quickly um, or research quickly on uh, one specific uh, industry, which uh, we probably have never been exposed to, uh, for yeah. example. Yeah. So the, the, the thing which is striking in, in every uh, creative agency, branding agency, is that it's a people business. It's, it's, yeah. it's a business which quality is going to depend on people. And um, several questions about the team. The first thing is that when I look at branding agencies, creative agencies, I see the core team and I see around them a lot of freelancers, a lot of part-time people working from time to time with them. And same question, I, I, so I would have a question on how do you select them? How do you select, because I'm pretty sure you work with uh, uh, a lot of freelancers around you to create videos, to create visuals, to, to get something you may not have internal. And it's very common in this industry. But how do you work with them? They are remote, they, don't, they are not full-time at your company. And secondly, how to recruit your team? How to, to spot someone who is creative in the right way? Not creative like artistic and doing whatever he wants, but creative for business, creative to make business, to sell. And I feel that's something I, I, have, a, I have sometimes a hard time to understand. How can you make sure the creativity of the person is going to be consistent with the identity and the objective of the brand? Um, creativity seems so personal uh, that it's, it seems not that easy to correlate. Is it because you have a brand strategist, which is actually helping the creative to canalize uh, the creative uh, creativeness and forces of, of creativity he has inside himself. Uh, could you tell us a bit more about how you build the team, how you manage with the, the, the friends around you, and how do you build the team? Yeah, okay. So first is for our internal team on the more of a permanent staff or core team members. On, on this, we, are being, uh, we need to be very selective uh, because um, uh, very, a lot of time, in fact, we uh, majority of the time we do our work in house. We don't have a lot of freelancers. Okay. Um, yeah, and then, uh, and then on the other hand, we work with partners who are very skilled and professional in their own specific area, like a PR companies or production companies. And and uh, we don't um, tend to you know take part of their work. We we handed that that part of the uh, task or responsibility over to our partners and we trust them uh, in that. Um, so, so uh, a freelancer, as, as I mentioned that, we don't really hire um, a lot of freelancers, to, only in, uh, in the case that we needed uh, you know, copywriters uh, or graphic designer to help with uh, some of the workload. Uh, but okay. it was never- It's adjustment. Uh, yeah, it's it adjustment, never, it's not structural. It was not structure and not uh, uh, the ones that we will hire uh, in, in our core process. Um, so so when, when we're looking for people and uh, um, in, in terms of uh, experience and then how, um, how they present as a, as a, as a person, uh, their personality is very important uh, uh, for, for, for our team. Uh, we need to have a uh, a natural expressor and uh, the person who are being very natural and then being themselves uh, as our company is called BHUR. That's a, that's very important uh, uh, part of uh, well, important spirit that we need to have uh, in our team, but also when we're facing our clients. Uh, for example, when we say uh, BSUR, it's also what we tell our clients about when they're building their brands. Um, be yourself, not to be like others' friends. Yeah, to, to, to make sure that everyone is understanding, the name of the company is four initials, B S U R, which sounds yeah. like be as you are yourself, be, a, be, 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 yeah. be yourself, be as yourself. And yeah. A new presentation you were, you were mentioning Oscar Wilde saying, uh, be yourself because everyone else is taken, very famous quote, yeah. and that's the essence of branding. So the name of the company is BSUR with, with four initials, and it, 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 it translates the, 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 the idea of, of uh, emphasizing your own identity. 
Exactly. That that's a, that's a prevention of BSUR, and then also that's how exactly we will tell our clients. Uh, every company is unique, and then uh, every brand will be unique, and then be yourself, not to be like others. So that's what that's where we step in and are helping our clients to find the true version of themselves. Um, and then, therefore, with the team, we require everyone to be like that, uh, be be themselves. And then, interesting. It's a, I see. It's, it's a creative environment, and then we want people to have that um, a liberty in in uh, during the time during you know during during all the work process. They they have their uh, uh, own style of expressing their ideas and they have their own approach of presenting to clients and then um, but in the end of course uh, as a business we need to sell our ideas uh, but how to sell is um, each each um, uh, each member in our team they need to be a, a very very good listener exactly uh, and how can yeah. you be creative and a good listener because being, being a good listener means to be analytical, means to listen, to analyze, and to come up with something. But to be creative is, is a lot of internal uh, process. And uh, is, it, is it a brand strategist who is more analytical and uh, a good listener and to creative would be, be more, uh, uh, more with his own ideas? In fact, we involve our creatives in the, in the day one. When we have a kickoff meeting with the clients about the okay. whole business situation and the project, and they do interviews with the with the clients as well, there are they are not only a creative but also a business analyst. Uh, and then we we intended we we potentially training all the new um, uh, creatives uh, in this in this process as as we view it's very important for them to understand the client's business, understand their challenge uh, from day one. And then uh, if we uh, give it a metaphor, like if we, our process is like a train ride and then everyone gets on the train and no one gets off until we, um, you know, drive to the destination. So, and then, and then also uh, uh, in, in this, um, during the process, I think uh, people can get uh, judgmental sometimes uh that we think oh our clients they don't know about how to do branding and clients they don't know about how uh, uh you know you know you know how and what what is the best way to you know to make a decision uh but then i always say to them clients they don't know uh what we do that that is true that's why they hire us and uh clients they know everything about what they do and we don't know everything about what they do so we, didn't, we need to learn from them. And only if we learn and understood and then we're able to listen. So that is the key, uh, how we should get everybody to listen, uh, is uh, to understand that we don't know uh, what uh, our clients are good at and be humble. And, then, uh, and uh, otherwise, I think uh, for creatives, they can be you know, so proud of their idea and the thoughts uh, but not relevant to what our clients need or helping to solve their problem or issue. In the process of getting clients, do you feel clients work with you because of the ideas you initially provide to them, because of the understanding and ideas you have? So the creative work is actually at the very beginning as a sales process uh, when they decide to work with you. And basically they work with you compared to another one because your idea fit better their identity or their way of working or is it because of the references because you have worked in the industry because a very common way of choosing an agency is what you have worked in this industry have you who have you been working with it, it, it's always influencing but what do you think would be uh, the trigger which makes them decide to work with you is it the creative side is it on the opposite the analytical side that you are very processed very organized or is it the reference size or maybe another factor okay the, the only, the key, the most important reason is that the clients feel that we understand their situation when they make a decision. So it's more analytical. Yes, uh, understanding and listening and then um, be able to demonstrate ourselves as an expert uh, in the issues that they're facing. And okay. it's not about creative ideas. I can, I can oh, be I 100% sure on this because uh, in fact, in, in China, we never do create, we never 
present creative ideas and then uh, we don't go to pitches. You mean not before you work with them, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Because uh, that automatically gives a wrong suggestion. You know, the ideas are cheap and, you know, it's not really well developed. Uh, usually the pitches require a presentation in one or two or three weeks which is uh, really not, uh, um, how to say, uh, a not a structured or well thought through process uh, to have a, such a short time uh, to develop an idea and then um, which clients think it may work, it may not. Um, it's, it's not a, a valuable proposition uh, for, for a business. Um, yeah, and then, and then um, what we would do is, um, of course, clients still need to be convinced that you are the right partner to work with. Uh, what we often do is providing them a brand assessment in the beginning and help them to understand their uh, real issues or, or problems with their brand uh, or even with their company uh, uh, or products. And, and then uh, we discuss together and then to try to identify the real issues. Because a lot of time clients came to us, they are not necessarily knowing the exactly problem. They, they, sometimes they came to us uh, asking for new packaging design and help them, uh, hoping that would help them, uh, their product selling better. But in fact, it's not about their uh, 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 packaging design. It's about you know, the problem with their products or uh, problem with their distributions. Uh, you know, not fast enough, not uh, um, thoughtful enough, or could also be the communication message that was not right, uh, which did not highlight their uh, unique benefits of this product. So, so there can be many other things, and then uh, uh, quite also pretty often uh, we got a request, people asking us, can you help to design a website? And we, we said, yeah, we can. Uh, however, you haven't really sought out your um, uh, uh, brand uh, story or what you're trying to tell uh, through your website, and that, that is not clear. Or even sometimes they, they want to, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, to be more competitive in, in their new product uh, um, uh, uh, creation. And then we, we look at their brand, it's um, sometimes we tell them, oh, uh, your your brand architecture is not clear. It's not about that you don't have enough products. It, now you need to create more. You just need what to if, organize and then structuring it and make it clear for customers what you're selling. It's not about uh, keep creating new um, new items uh, and bring them into the market. And, what's and the brand you architecture? Already have, you already have a great existing uh, product, but it's not been well communicated. What, yeah. what do you what, what, do, what do you call brand architecture? Architecture means um, uh, it's like a, a tree that you have a main uh, part of the tree and then you have branches and it's all so clear. With, yeah, it's, uh, it can. Um, so it's a structure from, say, Unilever, you have mother brands and then you have many other uh, different, uh, you know, sub brands. Uh, um, and then um, it, it, it is a structure that indicates um, uh, different uh, um, level of products uh, or different level of uh, brands. Uh, sometimes one company, you can have uh, one premium brand and you can have one uh, middle segment and you can have a lower. So it's, it, it's, a, it's a structure that helps people or internally to understand what, uh, what your setup is. Uh, um, uh, with uh, um, how, how you segment different uh, uh, products and then brand and then to make that is clear for uh, for internal uh, communication and also for people who are working on the brands to, to know who is the main target and who is the sub uh, sub brands and and that basically it indicates a correlation of um, of different entities of the company uh, we talk a lot about in branding about semiotic semiotic words, semiotic analysis, uh, about the meaning of design, the meaning of, of the name and so on. Could you tell us how you organize this process of, of uh, creating a meaning through, uh, through visuals, through design and so on? How do you yeah. ensure the meaning you convey is uh, consistent with your creation? 
Mm. So, so basically, uh, I think a lot of process are very, very similar from company to company, uh, especially the creative uh, companies. Uh, process are very similar and you know we all start with briefing and then uh, researching and having interviews and uh, also talking to uh, external experts and, and getting extra insights this are all very very similar uh, and then we take um, uh, also research studies and then uh, scanning through the markets and reports um, what is really different is uh, uh, again comes back to people um, it's about how you, you know, what kind of people you hire and then uh, what kind of talent you put in that specific, uh, specific uh, process. Um, so so that, uh, that is really a strategic planning in terms of our, how we do our work and then uh, planning and understanding uh, each person's um, uh, talents and then uh, putting, putting that person in the right spots. And, and also on a, a personal level, uh, that person needs to have a very good uh, um, uh, integrated skills of understanding business, first of all, and then mm -hmm. be able to follow the process and then to dig very deep into a research. Uh, as I said, the curiosity is super important in our, in our business uh, and uh, while doing the work. Uh, imagine that you have a researcher that is not, who is not able to dig deep enough and then you're not able to uncover a lot of truths or facts or identify uh, you know, the deeper level of the issues. So, so that um, uh, we do really assess a lot on, the, on, the skill, uh, on this level of skill for each individual person. And then uh, of course the, uh, the capable and then the suitable ones that uh, we, we put into the team or we keep them in the team, <laughs> let's say. You have some Chinese clients um, in, your, in your portfolio. Um, I don't know how, how, how much you can talk specifically about some of them, but could you explain the context? Uh, they came to you because you're an international company and they wanted to go overseas. They came to you for the Chinese branding on the Chinese market. What, what's, um, what's the logics of a Chinese company coming to you and working with you? Um, let's say in a few years uh, ago, when we, uh, uh, around the time when we just started, there was a trend about um, uh, taking uh, Chinese com companies that are going abroad. Uh, well, well, companies want to establish their own brands and also exploring the international markets. Uh, that was in the, in the past few years. Um, and and uh, being, uh, being an international company that has a very, uh, uh, um, uh, has a lot of advantage that uh, uh, we understand, uh, you know, we have a good uh, um, uh, uh, understanding of the international culture and also backgrounds and then the people and team who are capable in, uh, in delivering that uh, aspects. And, and in, of course, in the recent years, um, things has shifted a little bit. Um, um, a lot of Chinese companies want to develop dom domestically. Uh, however, um, uh, with the international insight, that is also important. So now what they're looking at is that uh, you have a Chinese team, and, and then um, um, and then but who has an internationally um, uh, educated or cultivated uh, knowledge or skills, and that can help the strengths. Um, you know, based on what we already understood for the Chinese market and then able to take to the next level um, to t develop the vision and then uh, uh, more creative uh, ways of approaching the business for future. So, so for now, uh, at this moment that um, uh, we, are, uh, uh, we are positioning ourselves as a, a company, uh, as a Chinese company and uh, who has a lot of international uh, input and knowledges uh, in the field. Awesome. Uh, I give you an example of a pet food company. Uh, uh, it's called Nature Bridge, and when they came, Nature Bridge. First, yeah, when they first it's came Chinese? to us, it's yes, it's a Chinese. Okay, it's a pet food um, a manufacturer and a company. Uh, when they fam first came to us, uh, uh, they're they're already pretty uh, a, a strong player in the market um, in their category. Um, and they have this product that, that is uh, quite unique. Uh, it's a pet food that are made, made based on Chinese medicine uh, ingredients. Really? Uh, it, yes, uh, it's quite, a, quite a unique. And they've been selling uh, in, the, in the vet uh, channel 
you know, uh, selling to the pet hospitals and then through vets. Okay. Um, and then they want to, they, they, they want to take this product into a uh, European market because that's the product really uh, has a lot of uh, differentiating qualities. Uh, been having a lot of uh, 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 Chinese uh, medicine uh, based uh, natural ingredients. And that is quite a, you know, unique approach. So our clients think that they would have a, a great opportunity. But then uh, the packaging they had was very um, uh, kind of um, traditional Chinese uh, and then uh, with a lot of, um, you know, uh, the ink drawings and then which probably would not make so much sense uh, to the European uh, customers. And we also did research and then realized that um, European customers are better skeptical about Chinese medicine. Um, they would not uh, really try that uh, for the, in their food. Uh, you know, they are open to acupuncture and massage and things like that, um, more more physical uh, way, but I was never really um, uh, convinced to, you know, putting things going into your body. Even in so pet food. Same for the Same for the pet food. Pet is like, like a <coughs> family members for, for most of the European families. I am on your slide, so, actually, and I'm seeing the natural bridge work you did for them. Uh, yeah. And uh, maybe I'm going faster than, than, than what you wanted to do, but the, the look of the design you built looks like from, from Norway, from Sweden, with the, 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 the guy with a fish on in his hands. Uh, there's a fisherman. Oh, that's, a, that's actually the, that's a nature bridge, the mother brand. And then the brand okay. that I was talking about, it's called a vegan and a sage. Um, I see. Let me go on this one. Yeah. I, I saw it, and um, it was very, very, very simple design. Uh, very it looks like very authentic, uh, very yeah. natural. I see. I see. That's a, that's a, that's the brand that we reinvented from a, a old packaging of Nature Bridge. That is. Very, Did you find the name? Uh, hmm? You found the name. Sorry? Vigo and Sage. It's your name. Yeah, we, you found uh, it. our team. Our Company, our, our team created name, uh, Vegan Sage, and uh, it perfectly reflects, um, you know, the, the energy uh, part of the herbal benefits, and then also uh, having being a wisdom, uh, having a wisdom in in what the products offering. Uh, you know, it's a thousand years of um, Chinese traditional medicine um, I intelligence or experience. <laughs> And then combining with the, um, uh, the Western approach of uh, natural food ingredients and, and inspirations. Um, and then this is actually the first time we work on a pet food uh, brand or category. Uh, and then we won uh, several awards on that. One, one is the um, Penta Award uh, in 2017. Mm -hmm. We first just uh, uh, created an established brand. We won the best packaging uh, um, award. Uh, in that category. Uh, and then the Penta Award is the, well, I would say the, the it's like an Oscar award in the packaging design industry. It's the, it's the number one indicator. So ever since then, uh, we, we got quite a lot of opportunities in the pet food industry. And now uh, when we are being approached by clients from you know, a pet food, they say, oh, our company is well known in the, in the pet food industry now. So, so that's um, you know that's something that I would did not uh, plan to to have did not expect. Yeah. But, uh, references, really player. references. Hmm? Basically, basically, it's a, it's a service business, business people, business of people, right. and references count a lot, and sometimes yeah. leading you to a direction you were not you didn't expect. I see. Exactly. I see. And most importantly, because this brand really uh, help our clients to take their business to the next level. Um, uh, for for vegan sage in like uh, two or three years, they becoming uh, number two or uh, number two in in this supermarket, uh, number two sellers, which is which, uh, which country in uh, in Norway. In uh, Norway, and also yeah, also they're available in uh, Germany and uh, most of the European countries, and also in Russia, and then. Uh, China and Southeast Asian countries, they're everywhere. But it's produced in China. It's produced in China. It's exported to Norway, to Germany, and so on. Uh, and no, it's not produced in China. The products were, uh, the recipe was coming from China, the R&D team. And then okay. the manufacturer, it was manufactured in 
uh, uh, Germany and, and Netherlands. Uh, that's what I know from a few years ago, uh, like uh, two years ago when we created brand for them. I don't know if things have changed, but uh, the things were uh, made uh, outside the, the country uh, for for the easiness of you know importing because the food uh, pet food importing it's very uh, uh, complex. Uh, okay. It's better okay. to uh, to be manufactured locally. Okay, but still Chinese company they they, they were still managing the operations in, in in Europe. They didn't give franchise. They they, they produce by themselves, managing from from Europe. Yeah. So the name of the, the name of the company is Nature Bridge, like natural Nature Bridge. The, the mother company. That's a mother company, and the, the the segment you work on, which is the pet food, is Vigo and Sage, V I G O R and, and Sage S A G E. And you found the name. You 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 design the the packaging. You design the point of sales or the the, the display. I think I I, I understand. Um, and you, you, you work you work on the visual. Very interesting. Um, premium, premium is it? What is more? You, you made you made it more premium, or it was already premium? Uh, no, it was a uh, we we researched the market. That's where the opportunity is. And then uh, also, um, you know, exporting a brand and then building a new team, finding a new manufacturer in Europe uh, means a lot of uh, money and cost for clients. And then uh, the decision is uh, uh, they have to stay in the premium segment in order to be uh, profitable. I have a couple of questions on another segment you have you have worked on is the food industry. You have worked in chocolate, you are working in cookies uh, for China, so to bring Chinese, to bring foreign companies to go to China. Could you tell us a bit more about the, the challenges of food companies in branding in China? You are working in chocolates, cookies. Could you tell us a bit of the challenges that you have faced when marketing um, um, those, those, um, those chocolates and cookies companies? I would say number one challenge is you know, food is very specific for Chinese consumers, and um, uh, we love food. Uh, it's part of a very big part of our culture, um, and um, and also pe people are very picky about taste and food, and then people develop a specific uh, uh, taste or or uh, or preference on that. Um, so, what is really important for any brands, you know, in China or brands coming to the Chinese market, uh, uh, is that the taste, uh, whether the taste is right for the Chinese consumers, and especially for the people, uh, group of target uh, audience that's uh, you know suit, suited to their uh, preference. So that has been really important factor, and also. Uh, you know, number one thing that you should uh, consider and then um, uh, or research about or making sure that this is the right thing you are selling or bring into the uh, Chinese market. Uh, and then uh, the example we had with Mercy, I mean, their chocolates are really, really uh, great. Um, and then uh, um, uh, with Mercy, there are, there are many different flavors in the package. Uh, and in the early stage, we uh, uh, clients uh, uh, in uh, hired a research company to do food tasting and then uh, um, being very, very careful uh, on the uh, flavors that they are selecting uh, to put into the package. And then making sure each flavor is, uh, is uh, liked and then uh, preferred by the Chinese consumer. And then they would take out uh, you know, other flavors which is not liked by Chinese consumers, even it was selling so well everywhere else in, the, uh, in other countries. So, so that on, on that sort of regard, uh, we, we need to be um, um, strategically more thoughtful, uh, selling the right products or even modify some of the products uh, and and uh, bring that to China. Um, and on the other hand, it's about the you know the packaging and then uh, communication, and um, it's it's quite important that um, uh, we get uh, the right message out there because in the food category, it's very very competitive. Uh, you know, without saying like how how fierce that can be in the chocolate segment. Mm. Um, uh, for for Chinese people, I think not yet. There's a, a habit of eating chocolates, uh, like what you do in, in Europe. You know, every day and uh, after the meal, you take a bite, and uh, not so much of that. And people are still very conscious about. Uh, in fact, the people have a negative uh, connotation about chocolates, where you know has lots of sweets, uh, sweet, uh, sweets inside, and sugar and fats, and people are very conscious about that. Um, 
So, so, so far, uh, Ch Chinese consumer has not developed an addiction to chocolates, let's say. <laughs> Still a market to grow. Yeah, it's definitely for now, uh, what we've been uh, seen before in the gift segment, it, it's working. Uh, but there are so many chocolate brands uh, wants to um, selling in China. Uh, they believe this is a big market, but actually people who are consuming chocolates are still a very small population. I know you have a meeting. I don't want to, you to be late. Thank you very much, Shin, for, for being with us. It was very interesting to see how your product branding uh how branding uh can can be basically supported by agencies and not done internally i think that's that's a very important uh, fact to be aware of thanks Jim, and uh, have a very good day thank everyone for listening yep thank you and thanks everyone thanks for having me and i hope it was helpful